You know, there's a lot of similarities in the natural life and the spiritual life. And the parables are one of the great lessons Jesus gives, I think. It's hard to maybe say the number. There's maybe 70 or whatever number of parables. There are. Parables are always uh, congruous with nature, what's natural. There's never anything uh, unnatural. It is about the story of a shepherd going after a sheep, a woman making bread. It's about a man and his son. Uh, you know, it is real life events. Whereas a fable is telling a, tr uh, a true moral story, but it is not a real life event. For example, uh, there's the story uh, with Gideon's son where he says, the trees of the field went out to set a king over them. And they asked the olive tree, will you be a king? Well, trees don't have kings and uh, they don't talk either. So this is a fable, but it is telling a true story in it, a moral story in it. But parables are always real life events. It is because nature teaches us many things about life. For that reason, Jesus gives us two parables on prayer and on the perseverance of prayer. And one of the reasons for that is that perseverance is necessary in anything naturally in life. If you get anything in life too easily, the value of it is diminished. We don't put a lot of value on it. It's also a way of building character and nobility. Anything that takes, uh, like take education for example. The idea of education is to keep pushing us into a higher level of problems. You know, in third class you have a set of problems, the child is able to solve them. And as soon as the problems become easy, you put greater problems in front of them. And then when he solves them, then you put greater problems again all the way up. And of course, as time goes on, when a child is in sixth class, he looks at his first and third class problems and they are just simple to him. How could anyone struggle with such things? God keeps pushing us on and he keeps wanting to strengthen our character and develop us in different ways. And prayer, is no exception to this. Jesus gives the two parables, the one of the friend at midnight, he comes, he has somebody who comes to his house on a long journey and he wants bread, he has nothing to give him. So he thinks, okay, come in. And he brings him into his home. He has love, he has a willingness, but he doesn't have the resources to help his friend. So he thinks, okay, I'll go to my other friend's house. I'll ask him for bread. He knocks and the man, we know the story, is asleep. He wakes him and all the children are asleep. He says, go away and come back in the morning. But he persists and persists. The man again tells him to go away and again tells him to go away, but he persists. And eventually he says, not because he is his friend does he give him what he wants, but because of his importunity, his determination, his intensity and his persistence that he gives them and it says he gives them all that he wants and he takes all that he wants. So here you have it. There's an urgent need. An unexpected person comes on his journey and he says, here you go. I, I, uh, and I have nothing to give him. There's a kind of a desperation. I don't have anything. And you know, you can apply it in so many ways to parable. Uh, somebody, a friend in your life um, uh, has a need. Uh, uh, it can be any sort of need, whether it is a financial need, whether it is material things, or whether they are confused. And you say, I don't have any wisdom to give you. Whether they are in a real uh, uh, state of discomfort, but you go, I have no comforting words. I can say some words and I'll say the best I can, but it's not meeting their needs. And uh, I just don't have what the person my friend needs or somebody you know in in the many difficulties people face in life I don't have anything to give them but he goes to his friend and in this case it's prayer we go to God and we ask I have nothing to give him and it is if we went to God and asked and he just kind of handed it sure here what do you want anything else anything else uh, but he doesn't he holds back. He deliberately holds himself back from us. He deliberately hides himself from us uh, to really draw out that intensity in us and to draw out that determination in us and that perseverance in us. Like anything in life, any difficulty and problem in life, whether it is you see it in sport, people who push on to that heights that we all saw in the Olympics, or if you see it in 
politics people who go up to the top I know there are questionable things in any any uh, venture in any area of life business there are so many obstacles to push through and the pushing through them develops the character of the person God holds back and he doesn't give things to us so easy but he looks for perseverance for many reasons one is as we said the development of our own character the other is that it brings us into a place where we are fellowshipping with God more and in that place uh, God shows us other things and maybe lastly we can say in this is that in that place there is also uh, you know there are wrong motives in our heart and there are sins in our heart either directly related to the thing we're praying for or other areas and God uses that time to deal with that sin in our life and there is a struggle and there is a a long obstacle, a hindrance and an obstacle and you can feel it in the prayer and the prayer goes on days, weeks, maybe even longer and longer and uh, it's not answered and there's a struggle and it is God beginning to show and reveal that obstacle in us and that sin in us or the wrong motives in it and as they are removed and the obstacle is removed, God, God has purpose and then we also get our purpose and God is able to uh, give us the thing that we ask for okay well have a good day so let's pray as jesus said and not give up amen, amen.